Okay, this one is an instructional uh, how to play on the game Gemfire for the Super Nintendo. Nineteen ninety two. It's by Koei, which is a Japanese company that came out with a lot of good strategy games at the time. It's an area control country conquest, which starts with thirty provinces. You get to pick one of the factions. There are four starting scenarios with several factions in each one. They change slightly. I'm gonna go to Gemfire and pick one of the most difficult guys as my champion. Scenario 4, Lancashire Family. The Lancashire Family is the king that was in control of the original crown and six gems. And he was oppressive to the land and the people rioted and the princess threw the gems and dispersed them throughout the factions. Blanche has two gems at this point. Lyle has two. Tadoria has one. I'm going to choose the guy who doesn't have any. The purple with the crown just to the south of me is the uh, rest of what's left of the Lancashire family. And these are my three vassals that I can use to control the provinces that I have under my control. After you select your player, this is the advisors, which all provide pretty much the same information, but they provide it in different ways. This guy is more about war, she's more about peace, this guy gives you riddles, and this guy tries to give some kind of wise information. It doesn't really matter which one you pick there. Alright, here we are. Uh, they are taken in turns of each province is able to take one action per month, and of course there's 12 months in a year. You get your food deposit based on your cultivation in September, and you get your taxes based on people happiness in January. So let's go over the activities first. Um, in the lower corner here, you see my cursor box moving. All the way on the left with the swords, that is your military actions. I can attack, which is to move troops into a neighboring province and attempt to win it militar militarily. I can recruit more soldiers, which costs gold. I can move troops, which is to move troops into one of your own provinces or into an empty province. And I believe moving troops into an occupied province is also considered the same as an attack. And then hire monster, which is to hire an additional unit, a special unit, other than the gem that you can use, which is a wizard. These are your diplomatic actions, which are cultivate your land, which will produce more yield when you get your food. Trade, which is to buy and sell food at a high, average, or low prices, which will be your main way of getting an influx of money. This is to give food to the people, which increases the happiness. It's the red flag up in the right-hand corner. That's my current level of happiness, 0 to 100. If you maintain a very high happiness, good things randomly happen to the province. If you do not, bad things can happen, up to and including the death of the governor vassal. So you want to keep that at least at 50 or higher. You can transport, which is the same as moving troops, but it does not include soldiers. It's just food and gold. And these are your... Uh, let's see. Your, your diplomatic as far as um, maybe clandestine act activities or with rela foreign relations. Uh, you can ally or attempt to ally with a neighboring province faction. You can negotiate for defection or surrender. Surrender rarely works unless they've got one or two provinces left within that faction and they're just beat down. Uh, the larger your faction's area control is, the better chances of them surrendering is. You can sabotage, which is just really isn't an advantage. It's, it's better to just build your own resources and attack. And you can plunder, which is basically based on their defensive ability, which in the icons there, minus 28, is the defensive protection of this province. You can steal golden food from that land. And finally, these are your at-home activities. Uh, you can view your vassals, your lands, other lands, which is actually kind of a big advantage for free without using an action to do it. You can switch your lords around. This is the only one that you can use to move your main lord, the person that is, quote, you within your faction. 
you can entrust, which means that you just... Like, if I, if I didn't even want to worry about number 18, I just wanted to worry about my main province, number 17, I would entrust 18, and he would just do it himself. The computer would control it. It speeds your turns up, but they do strange things, like attack when they're not prepared. And you can search. Uh, the search tells you the fifth unit of a province, and it actually has a small chance of finding special items, like a sword that can increase your attack up command ability by 50 points so it, it pays to try it sometimes but not waste an action when you have anything else valuable to do so in the beginning of the game first thing I'm gonna do is try and build my army a little bit increase the happiness of the people and make sure that my guys are prepared to attack which my first attack here is probably going to be number 19 just so I can move in on the guy who controls the crown the dragon and also so that I can reduce my possibility of being attacked. If I attack from 17, I of course have borders with 10, 16, 22, 11, and that's twice the possibility that a province will be prepared to take me on. So I'll go from here. Uh, in the beginning, a trade is 50-50. Prices always start at average. They could go down, they could go up. But I'm going to sell maybe 30, and then I'm going to give the rest to the people. I like to maintain an average of 50 food, because if you drop too low, they'll attack you just because they can starve you out. And now they show everything else that's going on throughout the whole country. Which it looks like the Lyle family is trying to take 15. They, they rarely ever get anywhere or do anything successfully. I, would, I do wish the AI was more powerful or better at strategy in this game. Sell 100 and, uh, let's sell 80. There we go. And then I'll give 100 to the people. Hopefully this will generate some positive things happening. Uh, special leprechauns will cultivate your field. They're called red caps. Um, a grave will increase the charm of your leader. Um, pe uh, a fairy will gather troops. A gorgo will give you food. They're, they're really cool things that happen. Oh good, we made the right decision. Prices are low. So now I'm going to buy all, and I'm actually going to tr change out the Lord here, because although Wraith is really good at battle, he's not so good at domestic issues like getting in a big increase of population loyalty from giving food. So I'm going to put Elias there, since he's a little bit better at dealing with the people. You'll get more bang for your buck with him. Let's go over that really quick. Here, let's view many. I'll show you my guys. On the on the top, starting from the left, the little constitution shows my rating for being able to deal with domestic issues. Um, cultivation, for example. Lauren can cultivate and get a three, a plus three for every action. Wraith, however, will only get a plus two for his cultivate action. So it, it pays to develop that or to use guys that are better at your domestic activities when you need to improve those quickly. The middle one, obviously, is your ability to command on the battlefield. Lauren's really good at that. Wraith's also really good at that. And the last one's your charm ability, which is if you're trying to negotiate the surrender or defection of another vassal. Uh, let's take a look at the fifth unit really quick here. No fifth unit there. Yeah, that means I haven't hired one and I don't have a gem. So what I'll do is I'll look at this guy really quick, which is the king. And his fifth unit... We know he has the dragon, however, and I will show that very soon. In the meantime, I will give food, and I'll increase my cultivation and my people happiness until prices go high. Then I'll sell my surplus, hire soldiers, and be in a posi position to attack. Periodically, the plague attacks, and it lands on usually ones with low population happiness, so it's also a good deterrent against plague and disasters to keep your people happy. Wow, the leader of that faction, Edric, was captured and they released him. Probably because they couldn't hire him. And now I'm pretty much in a waiting game. I'm waiting for prices to change so that I can buy those troops and attack. And it's across the country, so if I, in my province 17, see the prices are low, 
prices will be low in 18 as well. Okay, this is going to be difficult. I'm being attacked by Province 11, which is the Blanche family. The leader, I know his name is Roland. He's the guy in the suit of armor on the left. And his battle ability is 81 compared to Elias' 46. So this is going to be a very difficult battle. But I'm going to go through this just to show you how a battle plays out. I also have no 5th unit to bring here. <coughs> Taking a look at the units, I'm going to go over the attacker just because he has the 5th. But here we've got horsemen, which can move 3. We've got knights, which can move 2 and build fences. They're a little stronger than the footmen. We've got archers, which can move 2. They can only attack one space away, so the archer cannot attack here, but he can attack here. And theoretically, he would also be able to shoot at the horseman, and he would also be able to shoot at Zendor, the wizard down here, who is their fifth unit and their primary wizard. He has a strength of 150. The wizards go like this. All the wizards were gems in the crown, they were dispersed by the princess throughout the lands, and they have ratings. So the strength of Zendor is 150. Pluvius is one higher, he's 160. And then at 140, I believe we have Emperon. At 130, we have Scylla, I want to say, and then at 120 we have Skullric, and then at 110 we have Chilla. So they are vastly different, and Chilla going up against this guy, Zendor, there's going to be a 40 point difference right off the bat when they meet. So it's, it, it's tough when you have a weaker wizard against a stronger wizard. They also attack differently. Chilla can only attack adjacent, whereas Zendor can attack one space away. So he could hit this bridge, he could hit here, he could hit this bridge, he could hit the bowman, but he cannot attack close to him. And he can move three spaces. So they're all a little slightly different. You got to get used to which wizard you're utilizing. And these are the footmen. They're like knights, but they are a little weaker and they build fences. So what I'll do is I'll go one, two, I'll close in, and wait, and one, two, and wait. And one, two, and just for the heck of it, I'll build a fence. Which, my unit is so weak, it's only got a manpower of 39 that is unable to do so. I'll send the horses in a pathetic attempt to try and capture their flag, which is how you win here. You can either capture their flag, you can eliminate the entire opposing force, or they could retreat. Oh, Zendor is going to destroy me. Now, the computer AI is relatively obtuse whenever it attacks. So I'm going on the possibility that they will send all of their units in attack and that I may be able to kill that bowman that's on top of their flag and take it and force these guys out. This periodically happens in the beginning of the game just before you're able to build a military strength that's slightly better than your opposing forces and they think they can come in and take you. It's usually a good place to just reset and buy a few soldiers just so you can have a higher number. And Zendor is going to really finish me here. I'll move here just to back him off one. Maybe I can build a fence. Yes, I lucked out. Seven men built a fence. That was lucky. Zendor is going to back off one space and finish off my footman. I actually have a decent chance... Nope, he wiped out my knights. Great. I have a decent chance of this horseman finishing off these, uh... bowmen. The only trouble I have here is that the bowmen will never attack my horsemen, so my attack with the horse has to finish the bowmen, and then I have to hopefully none of their units be able to jump on that flag while it's empty as soon as it goes empty, they try to do so. Man, his battle rating is really killing me here. Roland has a battle rating that's twice Elias's, and they are just... they're rolling right over me. Wraith would have had a much better time at this.